Welcome back more family. I hope this message blesses you because our vision is abundant life for all. If you do enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend or family member. God bless. I want to get right into the word. I want everybody to sit right there. Don't go far because I'm almost finished. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Verse 21. I want everybody just to stay in your station. Don't go too far. The word of God is written in this manner. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gather unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Somebody say ruler. ruler. Somebody talk to me. Somebody say ruler. ruler. Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he beside him greatly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, somebody say a certain woman, a certain woman. which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus somebody say heard, heard. all right somebody say heard. heard came in the press behind him and touched his garment for she said if I may but touch his clothes I shall be made whole and straightway the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and she immediately knowing in him in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned about the press and said who touched me who touched my clothes and the disciple said you see the multitude that they're touching you and you say who touched me and he said and he looked round about him and said to see who had done this. But the woman fearing and trembling and knowing what had been done to her came and fell before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto him, Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. While he yet spake, listen to this, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain who said, somebody say certain. certain. Somebody say certain. certain. The, your daughter is dead. Why trouble it thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Somebody say, Don't fear. I don't hear you. Somebody say, Don't fear. And he suffered no men to follow him, save Peter, James, and John. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And he sees the turmoil and the weeping. And when he, had, when he was coming, he said unto them, Why are you weeping? The dancer is not dead, the young girl, but sleeping. And they laugh at him. Somebody say laugh. laugh. I don't hear you. Somebody say laugh. laugh. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the young girl, and when he came in, he entered, and the dancer was lying, or meaning laying. And he took her by the hand and said unto him, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, dancer, I say unto you, arise. And straightway the young girl arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years, and they were astonished. What a great astonishment. Every hand lifted up. Every hand, every hand lifted up. Repeat this for me. Say, Lord. Okay, you got to talk to me. Say, Lord. In the name of Jesus, touch my life today. In Jesus' name. Now, somebody say, Hallelujah. I don't hear you. Somebody say, Hallelujah. I said, Somebody say, Hallelujah. Now say aloud, amen. amen. Alright, I want to talk to you for a couple minutes 
I just want the keys, just the keys for a couple minutes. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I don't want to take much of your time. Take your time. Take your time. I just want to talk to you for a couple minutes under this title. One touch is enough. One touch. Somebody say one touch. I don't hear you. Somebody say one touch. We're outside, folks. Somebody say one touch. The Bible talks to us about a Jesus that's living and empowered. I don't come to talk to you about a dead religion and I don't come to waste your time. The Jesus that I came to present to you today is a Jesus of power. Somebody say power. The Bible says that even his conception was empowered. It says that Mary asked the angel, how shall this be? And the angel said, the power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The Most High shall overshadow you. And that which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. So even his conception was in power. Then when he gets on the scene, he goes into a secret assignment for 30 years and he gets on the scene and when he gets on the scene, the Bible says that he carries so much power with him that when he was baptized, the heavens opened. Somebody say open. And when the heavens opened, the Bible says that the father stood and said, this is my beloved son in which I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And then it says in Luke chapter 4 that the Holy Spirit drove him because he was a man that was guided by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness and he was there 40 days and 40 nights and he returned. Somebody say return. Come on, talk to me. I said somebody say return. When he returned, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I don't come here to talk to you about a dead religion. I don't come here to present to you some weak God that doesn't have the ability to change or doesn't have the ability to transform. I come to talk to you about a God who is, listen to me, who is so alive that the Bible says the heavens is his throne, the earth is his footstool, and he is not like the idols that the world worship who have eyes but can't see. The God that I'm talking about, you see, you sitting here today. Don't think that you're wasting your time. Don't think because there's not a lot of people here you say you came to the wrong event. No, the God that I'm preaching to you about today sent me here to tell you you are in the right place at the right time and I am in your midst of oh God I said the God that I'm talking to you had sent me to tell you you came to the right place you are in the right event and I am in your midst for the Bible says when there's two or three gathered together in my name there I am in their midst. Can somebody say hallelujah? Can somebody say hallelujah? Now, I want you to understand that there are many occasions throughout the scripture when Jesus manifests and displays his power. Somebody say power. But because of time's sake, and I know that the time has ran and some of you have been here for hours. I want to talk to you about a particular story. I want to talk to you for a couple minutes about the story that many of us have recognized as the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And many have preached for a long time that the story was just about the woman with the issue of blood. But when you take a close look at this portion of scripture in Mark chapter 5 verse 21, the Bible is not just talking about one woman. The Bible is actually talking about four different individuals who have a different encounter with Jesus. And those four different individuals are here today. The first individual that comes to him is the ruler. The ruler is named Jairus. Jairus is a type 
of the believers that are here today that they heard about Jesus they know about him and they come to him without nobody having to throw them without nobody having to hold their hand oh you're not here what I'm saying to you. without nobody having to tell them praise without having without anybody having to tell them you got to lift your hands now no when you know Jesus and you know what he's done for you I hope somebody understood Nobody's got to push you. Nobody's got to tell you to go. You go all by yourself. And you say, I'm going to come and I'm going to bow down. Oh, God, I wish somebody. Nobody told the ruler to come. He came all by himself because when you got revelation, nobody's got to tell you to come to Jesus. When you are operating with revelation, you come all by yourself and you say, Jesus, I know what you're able to do. I know the power that you carry. I know that the anointing is with you. I know what the Bible says, how God anointed you with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he came to Jesus with that type of revelation. When he comes to Jesus, you know that he has a revelation from God because he says, listen, my daughter is at the point of death. My situation is critical. Is anybody here who's got a situation that's critical today? My daughter is at the point of death. But then he recognizes the authority and he recognizes the power that Jesus has. He says, all I want you to do is come, lay your hands one time and she shall live. Why does he say this? Because he's got a revelation in his spirit and he is totally convinced that the Jesus that he has just encountered is able to turn around every situation with just one touch. Somebody scream one touch. No, no, somebody scream one touch. I'm talking to some people who are here today and I'm here to tell you, I don't know how critical your situation is. There are some of you that are listening to me and the Holy Ghost is letting me know that you're struggling with your kids, you're struggling with your family, you're struggling with different situations at home and the Lord wants you to know that if you will come to Jesus and ask him for just one touch, that will be enough to change the totality of your situation. Can somebody scream amen? amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory! Now, there is a second person who's there. The second person is not as mature as the first. The ruler is the more mature out of the four individuals I'm talking about. The second person is the woman with the issue of blood. Now the Bible says she had heard about Jesus. Now I want you to pay attention to the woman with the issue of blood because she's heard about Jesus but she's still bound. She heard about Jesus but she's still bleeding. You didn't hear what I said. There are people here who have heard about God but they're still bleeding. Oh my God in heaven. The woman with the issue had heard. She had come but she was saying, I'm still bleeding, although I've heard about the goodness of the Lord. I'm still bleeding, although I go to church. And there are some of you sitting here tonight. You've been to church. You've been to events like this before. You've been outside in the rally, but you're still hurting. There's a part of you that's still bleeding. There's a part of you that still needs attention. And the Lord has sent me here as a prophet of God to tell you today. Oh, God, I wish somebody had been doing like this. Today. It's not like the other days. And this event is not like another event. I am telling you that if you will come today and ask Jesus, and you will come to him and say, Lord, I'm here because I believe your word. And I just want to touch you one time. I promise you that today will be different than any other day. Whatever you've been bleeding with shall be healed today in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation is causing you to hurt, whatever problem in your body, or whatever problem in your soul, whatever problem in your mind, there's some of you that your mind don't let you sleep at night. There's some of you that are talking, and you and you know that when you go to your you go to your house, you lay on your pillow, your mouth is shut, but your mouth is still up, your mind is still going. You're so worried about different things, you're fearful, you're bound up, you're bleeding from the inside. And you got to 
and every physician, the Bible says she was bound for 12 years. The number 12 means government, meaning that she was in a situation that was governing her and she didn't have a way out. She had gone to everything she knew but nobody can help her I'm telling you today I don't know how many places you have gone I don't know how many bottles of liquor you have drank and I don't know how many women you have slept with I don't know how many men you have tried but I'm telling you the master physician is here today oh God. I said the master physician the master is here today and if you will come no matter the price if you will come, no matter who's watching you, I promise you that something inside of you was, is gonna change and something inside of you is gonna break. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood is the type of the believer who has enough of Jesus to come, but not enough to be whole. Well, come on. Come on. You need another touch. Somebody say another touch. No, somebody say another touch. You need to just come one more time. I promise you that everything's going to be different this time. If you give God your best one more time, I promise you that your life will change this time. She heard. She came. But she came bleeding. Now hear me. There's a third person. Somebody say a third person. Oh God, somebody say a third person. You know who the third person is? It's the young girl who's never heard in his dad. Did you get that apostle? So you got one that heard enough to come by himself. You got one that heard and came bleeding. But you have another one who never heard and so is dead. You need to hear what I said. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you. And faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is life to those who hear it. The word of God is life to all of your flesh. This word will do something inside of you that nothing else can do. Because she had not heard she was dead and there are people here today that you are spiritually dead you are mentally dead you're walking around and physically and it looks like you're alive but inside of you everything has died everything has broken down and you know that you're struggling and you know that you don't know which way to go you feel confused you know why because you have not heard if you will hear the jesus that i'm talking to you about i'm talking about a jesus that's able to make a prostitute a preacher i'm talking about a jesus that's able to make somebody broken a blessing I'm talking to you about a Jesus who will lift those who are at the bottom and bring them to the top. I'm talking about a Jesus who will take you from being the tail to being the head. I'm talking about a Jesus who will take you from the bottom and put you at the top. This word. Somebody say the word. Somebody say the word. The word is what quickens you and brings you into true life. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the word of God, the grace, by grace are you saved. The, the, the word is able to quicken you. The word is able to make you alive unto God spiritually. There are some of you, you feel that everything inside of you has died. Why? Because you haven't heard the word. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You got the woman, you got the woman that heard enough but she's still bleeding and then you got the dentist. The dentist, she's 12 years old. It's a sign that's the age where you are still a, 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 a young girl but you're, you're into maturity you are immature and you she had not heard she was at her house her dad heard but she hadn't heard she hadn't heard for herself and so she was dead and the, listen to me you gotta thank God that you're here today because nobody can touch you like Jesus can and no Nobody can raise you up. There are two things that Jesus did when he went to the house. The first thing that he did, the Bible says, was that he reached out and he touched her hand. He touched her hand. Why? Because all you need is one 
Somebody say one touch. He touched her one time. And then he said, Talita Kumi, which is, little girl, I tell you, get up and arise. I don't know where you have been lying. I don't know where I have been keeping you dead. I don't know what situation you feel. That everything in your life has just been at the bottom. And everything keeps getting worse. You are lying on your bed and you are dead. You don't know what to do. I am telling you, Jesus is the answer. I am telling you that Jesus held in his word. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father except they come to me. The Bible says in John chapter 11 that he told the disciples, he told Martha and Mary, your brother will live, he shall rise again. And Martha said, I know he's gonna rise again in the day of the resurrection. He said, no, Martha, don't you understand? I am the life and I am the resurrection. If anybody believes in me, although he was dead, he shall live again. I'm telling you today at this park, there are people that are gonna come at this altar call and though you were dead today, you shall live again. It don't matter how long you have been dead. It don't matter how long the devil has tried to keep you down. Today, God sent me here as a servant to tell you your day of resurrection has just arrived. You didn't hear what I said. The time for you to be dead is over. And it's time for you to come out of your cave. It's time for you to come out of your burial site and start living for Jesus. If you believe it, say hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody say amen? amen? I don't hear you. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, there's a fourth person. Somebody say a fourth person. I don't hear you. Somebody say a fourth person. You got the ruler who's mature, who's heard and he came. You got the woman who's immature, she heard but she's bleeding. You got the one who has not heard and because they haven't heard they're still dead. But then you got a fourth group. And this is the most dangerous group because this is the distracting group. You got a group that have seen Jesus but they don't believe in him and instead of joining what he's doing they will laugh at him. When he walked in the house the Bible says that he said the woman it's not that, but she's sleeping, and they laugh in the scorn. You will always have a group that's going to stand in the side laughing at everything that we're doing. And if you're not willing to be laughed at for Jesus, you're not going to see the miracles of God. You didn't hear what I said. I'm here to talk to some radical people. In this park, you're always going to have the naysayers and the bystanders who are always on the side. They're in the house, but they're not there to support. They're in the house, but they're not there to push forward. They're only there to cry or laugh. But they never stand with God and they never stand with his word. And there are people like that in your life who are not there to push you. They're there to tell you don't be too radical. They're there to tell you take it easy. You don't got to go to church so much. You don't got to be all about Jesus so much. Those are the people that are the bystanders who will laugh at you when you get radical about God. And when you start talking the word of God, you got to forget about those people. You know what you do with those people? Put them out. You didn't hear what I said. You got to, uh, you got to, you, everybody's got a group of people that they got to put out. Somebody say, put them out. Somebody say, put them out. Jesus walks in. He hears. He says, the young girl's not dead. She's sleeping. They heard the word. They saw Jesus. And they decided to stay in unbelief. You always will have a group who no matter how much evidence they see and no matter how much word they hear, they will always stay on the sideline. Watching to laugh at you. Watching to see how radical you are. But I'm here to tell you that when I make this article, if you will come up here, no matter who's watching you, something supernatural is going to take place in your life. Something radical will take place in your life today if you're willing to give Jesus an opportunity just one touch somebody say one touch somebody say one touch that's all you need from Jesus for everything in your life to change there are rulers here there are people with an issue of blood there are people who are dead and there are people who are laughing. 
Which one are you? Oh God. Which one are you? Because Jesus is here. And he's, he does, he's ministering and he's dealing with all of them. Get my worship to up there, man of God. Amen. Now I want you to stand on your feet right now. I want you to stand on your feet. Jesus, walk. Here. He walked with the ruler. He walked with the ruler. He walked with the ruler. The woman with the issue of blood followed him. And the damsel waited for him. The ruler walked with him. The woman with the issue of blood followed him. And the damsel waited for him. When I make this altar call, no matter if you're the ruler, no matter if you're the one bleeding internally, no matter if you feel that you're dead, I want you to get out of your seat and I want you to meet me here. I want to pray for you and I want to lay hands on you. Something supernatural. God sent me here with a message. God sent me here on an assignment. Something supernatural is going to take place. I want everybody to come forward right now. Come.